Good morning, welcome back you guys, nice to see you here. So, it's currently Friday morning, it's Good Friday, it's a beautiful sunny day we've been promised, and the thing with Cornwall on a bank holiday that's sunny is, I'm sure you can guess, it's hell. It gets really, really, really busy. So, I'm up really early, it's quarter to seven, I'm actually going to leave Cornwall, I'm going to cross the Tamar, I'm going over to Devon because I'm going to take you guys up to Dartmoor for an early morning stomp in one of my most most favourite places. I'm really, really excited. I haven't been there for a few years. It's the most mystical, mythical, eerie, spooky, enchanting places you can go on Dartmoor. And it's dead easy to find. And if you've never been there, then I hope next time you're down in the southwest that you'll make a little pilgrimage to this little tiny, tiny piece of woodland because it is so magical. Anyway, the sun is now up. I kind of wanted to get going before the sun, so I'm a little bit late. So we need to get moving. Let's go. So we made it, it's now three minutes to eight in the morning, so it took just over an hour to get here. The roads were really, really quiet. It was such a lovely drive in. I wish that I'd been able to stop and share some shots of it with you because the light was just so, so pretty, um, but I just wanted to get here. So I need to rig up some kind of camera in the van that doesn't bounce around so that I can share the driving footage with you. So the van is behind me and I'm now heading off to Wisman's Wood. Uh, there were a couple of cars in the car park. I think somebody had slept in one overnight. It was all steamed off, so uh, yeah, hopefully I didn't wake them up. And um, yeah, let's go find Wisman's Wood. Now, I don't know if you can see, up ahead is a tiny little scrap of trees. That, my friends, is Wisman's Wood. It's absolutely tiny. So welcome to Wisman's Wood. Isn't it just the most magical place? And if ever there was a setting that should have been in a Lord of Rings movie, this is so it. So according to Wikipedia, there's over 120 different types of lichen or lichen, depending where you're from, that grow in this tiny little woodland. And there's a whole heap of history here. These trees are really, really old. It's predominantly an oak woodland and there are lots of tales and ghost stories that go along with this place for sure. There's no way I'd camp here overnight. I did just pass a couple of guys in tents, fair play to them. No way I'd do that. <laughs> Okay, here's the top half of Dartmoor. If you imagine Dartmoor to be a big circle with um, a cross through it, two bridges is where the cross meets. So this road goes to Exeter, this road goes to Newton Abbott, this road goes to Tavistock and this one to Plymouth. So right where they meet is Two Bridges Hotel and you can park opposite the hotel. There's like a little car park, it used to be a quarry and then you just walk out, follow the river line, it's all pretty well signposted. And that there, my friends, is Wisman's Wood. It is tiny. So I'm gonna walk through the wood and I'm gonna go up here to there's a weir that I wanna go and see. And then I'm gonna take a little detour up onto Longerford Tor and then come back through these old settlements, which should be quite interesting. This is one of my favourite lichens, and to be honest, it's probably the only one I actually know the name of. This is called Old Man's Beard. Isn't it fab?
I've just walked through this really overgrown bit and I suddenly realized halfway through it that this area is home to a lot of adders according to Wikipedia. So I just started singing really loudly. Apologies to anyone else out here that heard that. <laughs> so I don't have a recipe for you today, but I do kind of want to talk about water. A month or two ago, I was um, down West Cornwall camping and I went out on a coastal walk and I was out for a couple of hours longer than I thought I was going to be and I ran out of water. And that really got me thinking because I don't want to have to cut short a trip if I'm enjoying it just because I'm getting low on water. I don't want to have to carry extra bottles of water because of the weight. I really am not interested in that. So I started researching different ways to be able to purify water while I'm actually out because if there's one thing England has lots of, it's water. Let's be honest. So when it comes to purifying water, I didn't want to have to um, make a fire and boil water and let it cool before I could drink it or take a gas stove with me. I wasn't interested in the extra weight or hassle. I didn't want to drink crappy tasting water, so I didn't want to use iodine or purifying tablets or bleach. That didn't sound much fun. So I was looking at on-the-go purifiers. And also because I don't tend to do overnight camps, I just want something that's quick, that I can find a water source, get the water out and keep moving. So I settled on this, it's the Sawyer Micro Squeeze. And the reason that I settled on this one is a lot of the through hikers that do, you know, like four, five, six month trails through America or wherever, this is the one that a lot of them seem to use. And I figure if it's good enough for them, <laughs> then it'll be good enough for me doing like a little four hour hike on Dartmoor. So this is gonna be the first time I've used it. I'm at this lovely little river on Dartmoor. Um, there could be a dead sheep in the water up there. Don't really wanna be drinking that kind of bacteria. So apparently the soya is gonna filter all of that crap out. Okay, so we've got our bag of river water and then we're just gonna screw the actual filter onto the neck of the bag. Can I do this one-handed? Oh, it seems I can. Okay, then off with the cover. Now, you can just drink the water straight from the bag. The river water will go through that filter so it will be safe to drink. Or you can squeeze it into your clean drinking water bottle. So let's just try and drink it direct first and see how that goes. Well, that certainly works. Now let's try squeezing it into my water bottle. So if you just let it hang, that much comes out. If you squeeze, that much comes out. So the other nice thing, now I fill my bottle up with clean drinking water. If I'm gonna be out for a longer time than I think, or if I'm not sure where the next water source is, for example, then I can fill this bag back up completely and just stick this in my pack. And another thing that a lot of the through hikers do is that they just screw this onto a disposable plastic drinking bottle um, so they can just drink straight from the bottle, no bag necessary. The bag is a bit of a faff to fill up at a still water source. I was pretty lucky because I had that tiny little water cooler so it just poured straight into the hole. There's a fair chance you're not going to have heard a word of this because of the water all around me. If so, then this is going to look really funny because I'm going to have to do some kind of weird voiceover and it's going to look like an old episode of Monkey. Oh. So now I've climbed up, I'm at the very end of Wisman's Wood, I've just climbed up from the water and I'm just going to go and climb a tour.
So I'm all back in Myrtle now. I'm ever so pleased. I've got um, a chronic knee condition on my right knee. I've got osteoarthritis. But my left knee I injured recently at CrossFit and I found that walk back really difficult. My knee's all swollen and feeling really pissed off. So I'm quite pleased I'm back at the van. I'm now gonna head back into Plymouth and I'm gonna go and pick up my lunch and then head home. So I've happily got myself some sushi. I've got myself a cold brew coffee, all is well in the world. I hope you enjoyed that little wander with me. It was fabulous and I had pretty much had Dartmoor to myself, which was very cool. My little tip to you is that if you're out and about, it's a nice day and it's a public holiday or a kid's holiday or whatever and you wanna go and do something like that down here, just get up early. Apart from two campers that were out collecting firewood in Wisman's Wood, I had it to myself. By the time I walked back, kind of 11 o'clock I guess, the people, the hordes of people just pushing in. It was like, oh, if you like crowds, then fine, crack on. Personally, I don't. My advice to you is just get up early and enjoy these places. So I'm gonna finish this up and I'll see you guys back at home. Don't tell anyone, but it seems one tray of sushi wasn't enough, so I had to go and buy another one. Hey, I had a big walk today. I need the energy, right? Okay, so I am back home and it's a few days later. I did indeed completely knack my knee and I've been laid up all Easter. Yikes. It is on the men now though. It's still pretty damn clunky. So this is what you get in the kit. You get the one litre water pouch, which seems decent quality. I'm sure it's not going to last forever, but it does seem to do the job. You get the Soya Micro Squeeze, which is the filter that comes with the cap and with the push and pull drinking spout. You also get um, a straw and I'm not entirely sure when I would bother using this and I don't bother carrying it in my kit, but the straw goes on the bottom, the cap comes off, and then you can drink directly from a water source. I can't see that being very comfortable, very efficient, or anything really. I'm, I'm not quite sure why you would use that, unless perhaps the water source was like in a crevice and you couldn't get the bag down there, not sure. But like I said, England is so full of water that I really don't think that's ever gonna be a problem. You get the cleaning syringe, which is for back washing the filter, and to do that, all you do is take the cap off, Fill the syringe with water, pop the syringe on the clean end and then push the water through and that just backwashes any debris out of the outside of the filter. And in case you're interested, that's the box that it comes in, so it, it is a pretty small kit. So one other benefit that I wasn't expecting but was really lovely was that on Dartmoor the water was icy cold so it was extra refreshing. So I actually ended up tipping away all the water that I had in my drinking bottle and replacing it all with the Dartmoor water. In terms of how long this little gadget will last, apparently it's going to clean 100,000 gallons of water. That's going to outlive me people. As far as the cons go on this kit, it's not the cheapest, it's around 40 quid on Amazon. Now from my point of view, it actually ticked so many positive boxes that I thought it was actually a bargain for 40 quid, but I appreciate that if you're putting your kit together on a budget, 40 quid is quite a lot of money. In the Sawyer Squeeze range, there are actually three different models. There's the Sawyer, like the original Sawyer Squeeze, there's the Sawyer Mini, and this is the Sawyer Micro. Now this seems to be the most expensive of the three. However, I did do quite a lot of research and I would avoid the Mini. That seems to not be as efficient as pushing water through the filter. It's harder to actually get water through um, and it takes longer time. However, it's around the 20 quid mark, so if price is a big factor for you, then you might want to look at that one. And the original Soya Squeeze has an efficiency rating very, very similar to this one. It's just a little bit bigger and heavier. Overall, I am really, really happy with this purchase. I loved the fact that I didn't need to carry extra water and that I could just stop and get that ice cold refreshing stuff from the river. It was lovely. It was an absolute bonus for me. So one of the other cons that I hadn't actually thought of ahead of time, because I'm not gonna be using it every day like the through hikers are, um, I'm gonna need to let this dry out properly in between uses. So I carry all this kit together in a little Ziploc bag in my hiking pack. If I then put that in there, seal it up, and just leave it for two weeks until I'm next out, then there's a fair chance, I would imagine, that mold is gonna grow in that filter. So after each walk, I'm gonna to have to clean it out as soon as I get back, and then I guess just leave it on a windowsill to dry out. And in terms of what this actually filters out, let me just refer to my little list. It, apparently it filters out 99.99999% of all bacteria, which includes things like salmonella, cholera, and E. coli. 
It also filters 99.99999% of all protozoa, which includes things like Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Now, I have no idea if any of that was in the water that I drank, but it's nice to know that this has kind of got my back. <laughs> So that's it for today guys, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that lovely walk on Dartmoor, I certainly did. So I'm gonna see you guys next Wednesday with a really tasty recipe coming from the Porth 11 Food Festival. We're down there this weekend and I cannot wait. The itinerary we've got looks just awesome. I'm really excited to be back down at Porth 11. So keep an eye out for that one. That'll be published next Wednesday sometime around midday. And until then, I hope you have a fantastic week ahead and an awesome weekend, whatever you're up to. Until next time, guys, happy camping. <laughs>